and uh, at the end you are asking me that is there some mantra which somebody can chant yes yes, yes. so now disclaimer you can chant this mantra always okay it does not depend on your ascendant sun moon or anything just forget your horoscope because anyways you are perfect right only <laughs> Oh, that was the best one. <laughs> yeah, so we we have no problems inside. Only problems in our house. So you can take this as. A, let's take this as a remedy for our uh, bad, not so good house. Okay. Or as an excuse. As an excuse. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, one mantra we can always do that is Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. This is especially for the moon, which is the most important planet. Okay. And this this gives the mind freedom from all anxieties. Okay, now uh, you you need to do this hundred and eight times. But if moon is badly placed, it is afflicted, or in the eighth house, or in debility, or with malefics, or if you feel that your emotions are not under your control, or moon is not only emotions. Moon is the way you feel about life in general. Yes, because I always say sun is the kingdom. But how big is your kingdom? How much resources do you have? And moon is how? What do you? How do you feel about those resources? Yes, you have ten bungalows, but do you want another one because you think those bungalows are not giving you happiness, and you think that the next bungalow will give you happiness? When then your moon is damaged. You see, um, if you feel so again, as I said, you know, uh, there is no problem with your moon. Your mind is perfect. <laughs> yeah. The only problem is in the horoscope. Moon will be better. Okay. So if you feel that in your chart moon is not well placed somewhere, you know, in the Vamsa, the Samsa, or any other chart, because the problem is coming from there, right? Not from inside of you. So then you need to do this mantra more, and you can do this four rounds every day. This uh, will do great changes in your life. Okay. In your horoscope, I don't know if the placement of moon changes within one year. Maybe it changes. Maybe it doesn't. <laughs> but I can ensure you, your uh, mental peace will come. Uh, and apart from that, you can also do this mantra, Om Namo Narayanaya. This is specifically for the 8th house. Okay. 8th house, so, okay. house primarily has Shani as the Karak. Okay. There is no other Karak. Because for 6th house, there is Mars and Saturn both. Saturn. And 8th house and 12th house, Shani Maharaj is alone. He, he has the key to both the houses. Okay? So this mantra is for the 8th house and the 12th house. And these two houses denote all our weaknesses. Okay, Because we have committed some sin because of some weakness. And that repercussion we are facing now as a bad karma. Okay? So or just, as a prarabd karma. Yes, correct. So just by stopping or changing that karma, it, it, it will not, which we anyways cannot, yes, it will not solve the problem because suppose um, we are married, suppose, and then many times people ask me, oh, I am married, but my relationship with my wife is not good, you know, uh, and there is another lady who is interested in me, kind of, you know, so what should I do? Should I stay with this lady or should I go with that lady? Because I am more interested in that lady, okay? And I tell them, no, that's nonsense. You can't do that. <laughs> yes, because by that you are ruining your Venus. Because Venus is the color for the 7th house. 7th house is the contract that I will stay with you lifelong. That's what the contract is. Okay. Yeah. So, people think that, okay, by changing my partner, that's what was the ethos of the Vedic scriptures in India. Yes, arrange marriage, love marriage, controversy. People, uh, sometimes one of my friends, you know, he asked me that, oh, the Indian system is so stupid, you know, he, he's also an Indian, but he said, you know, Indian system is so worse, you know, it's like, go and marry, you know, arrange marriage, somebody will pop up from somewhere and you will get married, okay. How does it work? I said, well, it works on the principle of karma, <laughs> yes, the amount of happiness that you are destined to get from that girl is fixed. <laughs> yeah, see, people should hear what he just said. It's very important. The amount of happiness and distress. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> we are destined to get from any pa partner or mother, father, anybody is destined. That's so you were bang on. Bang that on. is already there in the account. 
and that we cannot change, we can't do anything. That is why you will see all the categories. You will see happy arranged marriages, you will see arranged marriage couples fighting. Then you will see so-called love marriage couples, you know, love at first sight, divorce at first sight, as I said. <laughs> or you will see couples who have had love marriages and they are staying very happily. Okay. So the thing is, uh, ultimately it doesn't matter, you know, about the externals. And that is what is the greatest lesson of uh, the Vedic scriptures, that your externals cannot affect you unless you are damaged inside. Beautiful. Only if you are, because uh, your vibe attracts your tribe. Many times people tell me that the kind of people I meet in and I go into relationships always disappoint me at the end. Why does it happen? Like that? Well, then I ask them a question. How did you get into a relationship with that person? Yes. Because when we are having some issues inside, then we also get attracted or, you know, other person of that category also gets attracted to us. And then we start staying together or we get into a relationship. And then what happens? You scratch my back, I scratch your back. When the scratching is finished, then, oh, I don't know you who you were. <laughs> so that's the issue, you see. So when we change ourselves inside, then we will be better equipped to deal with situations externally. And that is where the word mantra comes in. Okay. And these two mantras, anybody can chant. And there's so can you repeat the eighth, uh, for the eighth house one, can you repeat Om that one Namo more time? Naya, Om Namo Narayanaya. Om Namo Narayanaya. Okay. Yeah. So this also you can chant in the morning 108 times. Every day you can chant. And uh, I had the great fortune to meet uh, Pandit Sanjay Raji last year. I was about to say that because uh, in one of his videos, I think these are the two mantras or, uh, or three or four mantras he mentioned. No, there is so, another mantra which he mentioned. Which okay. 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 Yeah, and that mantra is very important. That uh, this, you see, the first mantra, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, is for your, uh, it is especially for the mind. Okay. Because Vasudev Krishna, he is the Karak for moon. He is the avatar for moon. Okay. And uh, Narayan is linked very strongly to Saturn. Okay. So that is why this mantra is for Saturn. And Om Namo Narayana will cleanse you all, from all your impurities. If somebody cannot sleep in the night, that means the garbage is in a very active state in the mind. So the mind cannot uh, stop itself, you know, because there is a lot of garbage inside. Somebody can uh, has difficulty in the morning passing, you know, bowels, cleaning the stomach. Then this is the mantra. Why you have difficulty? Because you are not eating right food, right? You are eating all garbage. That is why you are not able to uh, have a good experience in the morning. Yeah. And and sir, you said that is for the eighth house. Yeah, yeah eighth house, eighth Cleansing. house in the toilet, right? Yeah, uh, and beautifully it also reminded me of because in the natural zodiac in the Kalpush Kundli, uh, Anuradha Nakshatra, those who love uh, Nakshatras, uh, suddenly this thing came to my mind. Anuradha Nakshatra falls naturally in the eighth house and it is ruled by Lord Saturn. And Anuradha Nakshatra, one of the traits for Anuradha Nakshatra is plumbing. And so we were just talking about the cleaning part. So beautifully how uh, this is working now. Yes, so that 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 is very important and 12th house is all our debt, debts, okay. 8th right. house is our uh, weakness and 6th house is our anarthas, okay. Okay. So now the last mantra, with, uh, it, it deals with the 6th house, okay. Sixth house. So the 6th house is what basically? 6th house, because all the issues in this world, not in our life, in our horoscope. <laughs> <laughs> it comes from the Dustanas, right? 6, 8, yeah. 12. Now, there, nowadays, many uh, YouTubers and astrologers have made these into very powerful houses. You know, oh, eighth house is transformation. You'll be transformed. You'll be transformed. This, that, oh my God. <laughs> Twelfth house, you will be, you know, you will think about cosmos. You will think this, you will think that. Oh my God. Oh. Dreamland. Yeah, so according to some astrologers, you know, there is no dusthana, there's nothing challenging, you know, or there is, it's not challenge, it's weakness, basically, okay, so the other extreme is like some astrologers in India, oh my god, your eighth house is active, you will die now, 
do this mantra do this or you will die <laughs> yeah. that is the other extreme but we need to understand that our weaknesses are there in these three houses okay three houses. and uh, sixth house uh, as we know there are nine planets and there are three satvic planets this jupiter sun and moon and the remaining are the six which are either rajasic or tamasic and all the weaknesses come from these six planets. Okay, so like Mercury, Venus is Rajas. You know, then we have Saturn, Rahu, Ketu, Mars. You know, these are Tamasic. Ketu at a spiritual level is Satvik, of course, but at a materialistic sense, it's Tamasic. tamasic. So uh, there are six Anarthas. You know, Kama, Krodha, Loha, Moha, Matsari. You know, the, these six Anarthas they also come from these six planets. Okay. So, a planet in the sixth house can give you a hint uh, how to pull that person down. Okay, that that could be the weakness or wherever the sixth lord is or who is the sixth lord. Okay, and especially planets like Jupiter, Sun, and Moon, they are considered to be very good in the sixth house. Again, good does not mean that they will not give you issues, but they will uh, make you better equipped to deal with those challenges. Okay, right. So, uh, when I uh, had the great fortune of meeting uh, Pandit Sanjayaraji last year, uh, that time we were just discussing and uh, we were both discussing on different kind of mantras and other remedies. So, he was also given some other mantras that I could chant. Uh, and he also spoke about this mantra, which uh, is chanted in the Gaudiya Sampradaya. For our okay. And it is known as the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Okay. So the mantra is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. This is the mantra. So in fact, uh, he had explained me how, you know, Hare is one, then Ram is one, then Krishna is one. Okay. So Hare represents, uh, Hare represents Jupiter. Okay. Then Ram represents the sun. Then Krishna represents the moon. So when we chant this mantra, uh, 108 times every day, then we are, investing these three planets in the sixth house or other than saying investing we are i could say that we are empowering these three planets to deal with any anartha which is coming from the sixth house because if you don't if we don't have anarthas we don't have weaknesses you see like why do we cheat people because of greed right why why we commit adultery why extramarital affair Venus, Venus, sexuality, uncontrolled sexuality, rampant. Oh, uh, I'm not happy with one, I want more, you see. Maybe I get some happiness, that illusory happiness which we are searching. So, these, this mantra is very powerful. And especially if people have a lot of problems with bad habits, like for example, uh, many times people tell me, you know, they are into drinking or smoking or eating meat or they are into watching pornography or excessive uh, masturbation, they are not able to preserve their semen, then this is the mantra which you should chant for eight rounds every day. Okay. If you chant Hare this Krishna, Hare Krishna. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. If you chant this mantra eight rounds every day, then eight is again Saturn, numerology. Yeah. Okay, and gradually, you, beginning, you can start with four rounds, and that will take you around 40 45 minutes in the beginning. And gradually, every round will take you seven and a half minutes. So, like that, you can chant eight rounds, that will be one hour. Okay, and if you think this is for like bad habits, especially okay, and if you have issues, difficult if you have difficulty becoming happy in life, sometimes people have this issue, you know, everything is fine in my life, there's no problem. But Still, I don't know why I'm not happy. <laughs> so for the home now, Bhagavad Vasudeva is recommended. And that is connected with our fourth house. Yes, moon. Yeah. Because moon is the way you feel about life. That is why difficult moon, you know, the person doesn't feel worth living in this world. And that is why they can sometimes try to end their lives. And for the eighth house, you have mentioned Om Namo Narayana. Eighth house is all the garbage. You know, if you have these problems, you know, bad thoughts all the time. Trying Negativity. to harm somebody, kill somebody. You know. Garbage. Eighth house is the garbage. I see. Eighth house is the graveyard. Okay. If you feel that I am in a graveyard all the time, you know, nothing is there with me. I am so miserable. Well, it's very difficult to distinguish the, these three areas. So, what I suggest people is they can start with these three mantras. 
Okay. At least one round if they can start. Because many people have these three issues. You know? For example, many people have difficulty feeling happy in life. Even if things are fine. So they think that, oh, this problem is there. If this is sorted, I'll be happy. But it doesn't happen. That problem is resolved, then there's another problem. They feel, oh, now that. Then again, you go into a cycle. So for them, the fourth house is very important. Okay, And as a generic remedy, you can also do Om Namo Narayana, as I suggested. So that will, Om Namo Narayana is very beautiful. What it does is, uh, it will make your system very clean. Okay, then you will only harbor good thoughts in your mind. See how important the mantras are. Yeah, then what will happen? You will because if your thoughts are good, you will eat the right kinds of food. Okay, right mm -hmm. doesn't mean perfect, but uh, it is said you know that you will be able to know what to eat, when to eat, and what not to eat. Okay, and uh, now the last thing if you are chanting these three mantras continuously at least for one hour every day, mm -hmm. if you are chanting. Then I will tell you in chemistry there is a lit, something called as litmus test. Okay. How to know if somebody something is acid or base? You know the color will change. I forgot what exactly it was. I studied fifteen years back maybe, but that's what was litmus test. So, what is the litmus test? Now that million dollar question. Does mantras work? Okay. Now the litmus test of if the mantra because see it is a very scientific process. There is a rule and there is an effect. If it is not there, it is useless, right? You can't just go on saying, oh, I am doing mantras. You know, my only problem is there's no result, but I am going on doing it. Then why are you doing it? Stop it. So it's not like that. Mantras are not very abstract. And sometimes people think, oh, I am doing mantras. It will need me a million years. You know, it will need me a million lifetimes. It's not like that. So the litmus test of if your mantras are working. Mm -hmm. Or the other way around, the litmus test that you are doing it properly. Okay. Yeah. Because the mantras will always work. It has worked for everybody who I know. So it has to work for you. So if it is not working, it means you are not doing it properly. Okay. Yeah. So what is the test? The test is that uh, you will harbor good thoughts. Okay. You will become, the fourth house will be clear. You will become happier irrespective of life situations. Okay. Now it doesn't mean that within one month, you know, you will become a superman. You know, anyways, you know, people are beating me and I'm just still with it. It's not like that. Okay. But your ability to be happy, satisfied, and content will increase multifold times. Okay. Your needs will reduce your desire, your unnecessary materialistic desires. They will go down. Okay. You will know when how when how much is more actually and when how much is less okay so many times people will ask you know oh i want to take this thing you know, i want to purchase this is it because of my necessity or my luxury yes now when you are doing these three mantras you will exactly know there will be like a red alarm signal you know pow, pow, pow. <laughs> it will start giving you alarm no, this is too much. You don't need this. This is not your need. This is your want. You know? Needs and wants. Okay. So needs is fine. Whatever you need, that the mantra will uh, tell you that, okay, your intelligence will tell you, yes, you should take this. Right. And wants means wants are unlimited. Rahu 11th house, Aquarius, unlimited desires. You know? Then your, the, your intelligence will give you warning. No, 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 this is too much. This you don't need. Okay. And the third thing is 6,000. All your bad habits will go away. <laughs> Just these three mantras and you can radically change your life. And I have had more than 500 to 6, 700 people who have done these mantras and their lives have changed completely. Uh, I mean, their horoscopes are still the same. <laughs> <laughs> Which means the karma has not changed, you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then suppose now somebody's 8th house becomes active. No, not 8th house, 12th house. And suppose somebody, you know, loses half of his money. Before that, if he was not doing mantras, then what will happen? Oh my God, I lost half of my money. <laughs> 
क्या होगा मेरा पैसा कहां से आएगा नाउ यू आर लाइक एनी विल जस्ट चिल आई मीन यू यू विल नॉट बी जस्ट चिलिंग लाइक दैट यू विल फील पेन यू विल फील दैट देयर इज इनजस्टिस डन टू यू बट यू विल बी एबल टू हैंडल दैट शॉक ओके एंड द बिगेस्ट थिंग व्हिच विल हैपन इज you uh, will start uh, to look for company of good people right the end of all this is the 11th house everything will end in the 11th house if the 11th house is good everything is good and not the horoscope 11th house okay <laughs> whichever planet is in 11 doesn't matter forget it forget your chart rahu is there ketu is there jupiter is there just forget it imagine that you never knew astrology 11th house means the people who you associate and the people who you take inspiration from 11th house is not friends 11th house is those people who you reveal your heart to in in privacy in seclusion and you listen to them years yes yeah. <laughs> when you reveal your heart you tell this happened that happened then that person gives you advice oh now you see i will tell you you will listen you do this like this so are you going and asking uh, searching answers in you know bollywood movies you know in, uh, in debate shows you know in tv you know in game of thrones in you know cricket and all these things you know? or you are going to a spiritual community and you are seeking answers there and the moment you start doing that then all these three mantras you know they will multiply their effects you know 10 times 100 times and that is the result that falena viparichiyate that all the good qualities will manifest in you people will say you have become a different person you have become a better person in fact in short you will become everybody's favorite <laughs> because everybody will love to stay with you because you will have no selfishness selfishness greed saturn <laughs> no lust nobody will fear to roam with you because you know you will not <laughs> yes uh, mercury envy everybody loves to be with you because they know you are not jealous if i tell you that i got a promotion you will be very happy yes so everybody you will be the first person everybody calls and tells you yes my dear sir i got a promotion but now before telling they will think 10 times to others are because they know na isko bola to isko jalan ho jayega he will he will try to downgrade me you know he will say oh which company that is oh, okay i heard they fired some employees last year you know <laughs> have you seen those people the moment you say something good they will try to pull you down yeah anything you say you know, like uh, one person was there i was telling him you know, that uh, that my elder brother stays in pune and then he said which part of pune i said you know uh, in that bane region oh that's not in pune that's in outside of pune and then i was like <laughs> <laughs> anyway the point uh, here is that uh, you will become a better person and the biggest thing is you will start enquiring for higher truths in life athato brahma jigyasa that is the vedanta sutra so we started with vedanta sutra and we are ending with the vedanta sutra and you will develop a desire because in shrimad bhagavatam this is the last thing i will tell you and if you want the summary in short at a later stage you know at a ultimate level these three things will happen to shrimad bhagavatam says uh, 